Hey everyone, thanks for joining here with Ed. I wanna introduce what we're gonna be doing here on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. Today, we're gonna to learn more about Ed, his background, you know, kind of the start of Global Crossing. But going forward, we're gonna talk about recent news, the industry, and try and get in as many questions as we can. Uh, if you're watching this, you have any questions, have anything you want us to cover, please drop it below. We'll definitely try and get it in a future video. But first things first, Ed, how are you? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me today. Appreciate it. Yeah, good. Awesome. Well, here, I uh, usually like to kick off like early career, um, you know, jobs, uh, you know, career path. Do you want to kind of kick it off wherever you think is early? <laughs> sure. Well, I, uh, I date in this business back to the ancient 1980s. Um, <laughs> so I actually started 1985 after I left uh, service with the U.S. Army, uh, started with uh, the with Eastern Airlines here in Miami. Um, I was uh, leaving Germany with my wife and child and decided to go to work for a big company and save up some money so I could go to law school. And so here I am 37 years later in the airline business. Um, I saved up the money, but I never went to law school. So <laughs> just fell in love with the business and could never see myself doing anything other than being around big airplanes. Uh, and so uh, he, here I am in 2021, um, still, still kicking around this business, and still thinking <laughs> up new ideas and trying to create, uh, create new opportunities. Yeah, no, awesome. Okay, well, now uh, this is going to be the interesting part. Uh, so walk me through, you know, you, you save up that money, never go to law school, whatever, work in the industry. Give me the like, start the, the kind of what says, hey, like, I can run an airline. You, you know, walk me through that, uh, you know, that mindset and what happened there. <laughs> Well, I, I spent some time uh, in the mid to late 80s uh, working for Eastern and, and Pan Am, two great names in the business. And then I, I left from there, went to Wall Street, where I worked at a big firm called Lehman Brothers uh, and helped them start some of the first aircraft leasing uh, platforms uh, that, they, that they created, uh, helped to run those. And so I got to work with uh, some of the big names in the business, Pan Am, TWA, U.S. Air at the time, where we were leasing them airplanes. We were also helping them raise money at Lehman Brothers uh, for their operations. And through the course of that, I, I got to uh, meet and work with the former chairman of Pan Am. And in 1991, he and I decided to get together uh, in the midst of what was a very, very difficult period uh, economically for the country and for airlines, uh, we decided to get together and try to start our own airline or buy an airline, and, and we did. So we started uh, United Express Carrier at uh, Washington Dulles, uh, the big airport in Virginia that serves D.C. Uh, we did one of the first uh, express contracts with United. Uh, we, uh, you know, we we we. Did, uh, we got that completed in 1991. We took it public in 1993. I did all of the external financing for the airline uh, through their uh, public offering, uh, financed all the aircraft and so forth. Moved on from there um, in a series of, of events to uh, with some of our investors from what with that airline, Atlantic Coast Airlines, and went down to Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago uh, to privatize their national airline called BWIA or BWI. Uh, and spent a few years doing that. Uh, BOE operated big airplanes, L-1011s and MD-80s throughout the United States and Europe and all through the Caribbean. And so I got to understand how a real big airline like that works um, in terms of the airplanes and the culture and the, all the route rights and all of the alliances and so forth. And we were able to turn the first profit for that airline in 57 years during the time that I was there. I left Trinidad after two years and, and came back to the U.S. where I worked with the, uh, the original founder of People Express, a great uh, man named Don Burr. Uh, I put together a business plan for him um, to, to restart People Express, and that business plan eventually became JetBlue, but we started that uh, with the idea of putting a new airline with new airplanes based at uh, New York's JFK Airport. And through a series of events that eventually became JetBlue, but we were very proud of our work on that in establishing what we thought was a tremendous opportunity and a great business plan. Uh, I then uh, worked with a, a major private equity firm and uh, convinced them to take an order position with a new 
Embraer 145, which is the 50 seat regional jet, uh, which was just starting to come into vogue. And I knew that all of the major airlines would eventually need that airplane in their regional subsidiaries, the regional affiliates, their express carriers. And so we put an order for 80 of those airplanes in. Uh, we bought a small regional airline, put those two elements together, the aircraft order and the airline, which only operated turboprops at the time. Uh, and within 18 months, uh, we were able to get deals done with US Airways and United and then Delta to fly those airplanes for them. So a tremendously successful deal, sort of looking out a few years to see where the industry uh, and the airline sector was going to be and figuring out what they needed and, and putting those resources in place early on so that they'd have to come to us uh, when those resources were needed. Uh, I then uh, worked on the restructuring of a, a major airline in New York called Tower Air, which operated 2747s. And we operated that uh, pre-9-11, pre uh, through uh, put it through bankruptcy and looked to reorganize that, but 9-11 uh, occurred and we weren't able to save that airline. I then worked on a number of transactions around the business in uh, online travel agencies uh, and was able to successfully restructure a number of, of those agencies and sell them off to some of the big names like Priceline, which is now booking.com and, and uh, Fair Portal and even Cheapo Air. Uh, so we were able to take those properties, uh, which were publicly traded and divide, the, divide them up and sell those assets off, which gave me a good, good grounding in the online travel space and how that operated, uh, which would be very helpful uh, in, the, in the years to come. 2008, I decided uh, with my wife to move to Miami. I had the, an idea to relaunch Eastern Airlines. Eastern had shut down in 1991, but it was a grand name in the business uh, here in Miami uh, with extensive route rights throughout the Caribbean and Latin America. And we saw an opportunity to relaunch that airline first as a charter carrier and then move into scheduled service. Uh, we successfully raised the money in 2014. Uh, we're able to get the airline uh, certified in less than a year uh, with the FAA and DOT, which is, which is a remarkable time. Uh, we grew the airline to six airplanes and our investor group thought it best at that time, uh, given their own personal uh, investments in the airline to, to sell to sell Eastern, uh, which they did. Uh, Eastern now operates uh, 767s and 777s throughout the US, Latin America, uh, and even over to Europe. So we see that as a success. Uh, I wish it hadn't been sold, but uh, you have to listen to your investors and do what they ask. Uh, that gave us the opportunity though, a few years later with the consolidation in the charter markets in the US, uh, to establish global crossing airlines or global X as we call it uh, and provide airplanes into this market. Uh, there's plenty of room uh, for us to cooperate and work with the other charter airlines. Certainly there's enough business. And so we've now uh, gotten it to the point where we've fulfilled all of the FAA requirements for certifying the airline. Our first two airplanes are here at MIA and we're finishing uh, some final uh, DOT requirements and we should be operating uh, within the next few weeks. So we see a, a huge opportunity here with, with this airline uh, to continue to do what we started at Eastern um, and to provide uh, additional charter lift for other airlines and tour operators, universities and football teams and all manner of clients who need um, the size aircraft that we have, the A320, the A321, which are about 180 seats. So, so far, so good. Uh, we're very pleased with our progress and we built a great foundation and platform here uh, to build a world-class charter airline. Yeah, wow. Incredible that you're seeing uh, like trends within the, the airline industry and, uh, you know, we'll be able to talk about a lot of cool things going forward. Some good teasers in there for videos yeah. we'll do, uh, you know, down the line. But wow, what a what a background. Uh, yeah, you, you must really love planes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a uh, the the problem with it. Problem with airlines and airplanes, you know, commercial airplanes is they get in your blood and you can't uh, you can't do anything else. You know, it, we run a twenty four seven operation, uh, three hundred sixty five days a year. There's something that's always going on. You know, when we leave here at five o'clock, it doesn't matter. Things still go on, uh, and the whole uh, the whole nature of the business is strategic planning, uh, acquiring the right aircraft, 
uh, moving the aircraft into the right locations uh, is just a fascinating uh, strategic planning um, uh, mission. And, and, and those of us who, who do this for a living, and the, certainly the team we have here, we, we just love that. We, we really can't see ourselves doing anything else. So it's, uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's it, it, we're on a mission at, at times, uh, but it really is satisfying to all of us to do what we do. Yeah, no, awesome. The The passion is very clear and we'll talk about some of those roles. And I guess here is kind of the, the way we're going to cap off at least the first video. Uh, we'd love to hear, you know, as, as the CEO and, you know, kind of growing the, the smaller airline, walk me through what your day-to-day, week-to-week looks like as the CEO of Global X or Global yeah. Class. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a dog's breakfast of a whole lot of different things. Um, and one of my executives said to me one day, he said, you know, we should put a GoPro on you from when you walk in in the morning until you leave at night because of all of the things that you're involved in and all of the things that you're asked to questions about or decisions or advice. Uh, so the, the day, I, 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 I try to start my day as early as I can. I, I, I have a big to-do list that I maintain uh, and I try to get through that to-do list every day, but it's a constant flow of people through the office, which I love. I love the interaction. Uh, people coming to me asking, how do we do this? What do you think about that? How, would, how do we handle this situation or that situation? Uh, and so it's a, an opportunity really to bring 37 years of experience doing this uh, to, the, to the front uh, and, and to be able to give some good advice as to certainly what not to do because Along the way, I've made just about every mistake one can make. I'm, I'm still standing, but I did make those mistakes and have the experience to talk about it. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's as important to know what not to do as much as you know, what to do. Uh, so that's a con there's a constant stream of that, a uh, constant stream of talking to aircraft owners and lessors who want to lease us airplanes, a constant stream of, of uh, meetings and uh, Zoom calls with potential clients. So the sales and marketing team will bring me in to, to talk to a, to a potential client, uh, to get them comfortable with what we're doing, uh, maybe to help close the deal. Uh, operations people are in constantly talking about issues with our aircraft and things that we need to do. My, my HR director is in my office two or three times a day talking about candidates and what the priorities are for hiring and making decisions on new classes for flight attendants and pilots. So it's a, it's a constant stream of, of, uh, of activity uh, that requires a lot of decisions, a lot of fast decisions, fast in, in terms of the things you just can't put off for a week. You need to make a decision. Okay, which way are we going to go on this because it's holding something else up. And I enjoy that fast pace. I enjoy the, the pressure of that. Uh, and I think certainly having done this for so many years makes it a little easier to sort of cut through what's important and what's not important uh, and focus on those things that need to be focused on every day. Uh, you know, the, the most important things that let, lets us move the whole company and the whole organization forward. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, look awesome. Sounds like you're wearing a lot of hats as a, I, you know, not to, uh, not to make a pun, but getting an airline off the ground. Uh, so awesome. Uh, exciting to hear and you know, really looking forward to diving into some of those hats and some of those operational things as we go forward and, you know, some exciting updates, anything else about yourself you wanted to get into the about you video? No, not really. Um, you know, I'm just I'm passionate about this business. Um, I'm passionate about helping our people who, in most cases, are much younger than me, uh, although some of our senior people are, are close, to, close to my age and have almost as much experience. But I love working with the younger people, our flight attendants, our flight attendant training teams, and, uh, and others uh, to, to impart as much knowledge as I can about this business and about what they should be doing and how they should do it, um, you know, as we go forward. So... Uh, just, uh, you know, we, I look forward to more of these, uh, you know, informational webinars, I guess you call them, or, or podcasts, uh, and, and to talk about the business and also bring some of our younger people in front of the camera here to talk about what they're doing and how exciting it is to, to start an airline. Some of, some of us older guys, we get a little jaded about all of this. <laughs> it's great to walk in and see the excitement on the, the faces of some of our younger people who are going through this for the first time. Uh, see how an airline is made. Um, 
you know, the, you know, they say the, the two things you don't want to see made are sausage and, and legislation, le, excuse me, legislation. Uh, I'd add a third to that, and that's a, a new US-121 airline. Uh, <laughs> you certainly don't want to look behind the scenes at times to see how it's done. Uh, but I think we've done a great job doing that, and I look forward to bringing those people in front of the camera as well to talk about all of that, hopefully inspire some, some other people to come into this business, which I think, you know, we're not maybe as exciting as high tech or media or some of the other industries I see out there. Uh, but what we do for a living and, and how many people we impact with the product that we provide, uh, the technology that we do have, and, and, and we are a highly technologically oriented airline. We're completely digitized and we operate $50 million machines that are basically a laptop with wings. So uh, we are as technology driven as any company out there. And, it, and just, just to see their excitement about all of that. So look forward to this. Um, look forward to talking to you and hopefully some of your viewers and, and others and, and just talking about this business, which we what we love to do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, look, thanks so much for taking the time. And, you know, I want to say anyone who's made it this far, please uh, drop any questions you have. Lots of good things to come. You know, this is just the beginning, but Ed, thanks so much for joining. This was a great first video. Jason, thank you so much. Everyone have a great day.